Hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Should You Pull for the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now today's one is actually going to be a really short video because we're actually only going to be covering one character and that character is going to be Aranea. Basically, we don't actually know what the banner is going to look like that contains Aranea. All we know is that she is coming back for a return, a returning appearance to see if people want to try and pull for her who may have missed out on her in the first place. Now, when she came out, she was pretty ridiculous, but I'm making this video today to take a closer look at her, closer look at the things around her and see if Aranea is still worth pulling for at this point in time if you don't already have her. So if that's something you guys are interested in, then stay tuned and keep on watching. As always guys, don't forget to check out the description box below for all of my social media links including Twitter, Twitch, Discord and Patreon. Twitch this week I will be continuing to farm Alexander as often as I possibly can so it will be lovely to see you all and I will also be continuing my Final Fantasy IX playthrough this Saturday evening which was fantastic last Saturday and it was lovely to see quite so many of you come along for something that wasn't Opera Omnia so it would be great to see you all again this Saturday. And then for Patreon of course I always shout out one of my patrons at random every time I release a video to show my thanks and appreciation for each and every person that comes along to support the channel further and today that person is going to be Cutthroat PK. So thank you ever so much for your support, it means all the world to me, you, you guys all know that. Don't forget to check out all of the links in the description box below for resources related to Operomnia, so Dissidia Info, OO Tracker, Tombri True, Dissidia DB, all that good stuff and of course don't forget to check out all of the other content creators besides myself. Now, of course, we can have a quick look at an estimation on what we think the Aranea's banner mates might be, but obviously don't take anything I say here as gospel because it could be completely different, as have the banners with Kane and Kata been recently. However, these are all based on banners that, were, that did arrive in JP bef just before the LD era began. So the first banner contained uh, Kata, Leo, and Pinello. We obviously got Kata slightly later. The second banner contained Dark Knight, Cecil, Emperor, and Ignis. Now we got Dark Knight, Cecil a lot earlier. And then the third banner included Edge, Yuri, and Beatrix. Now, taking into relation the idea that perhaps Beatrix has been replaced by Aranea in this particular scenario, and given the fact that we've already had Yuri, Emperor, Leo, and Pinello turn up, there is a theory to be stated that Edge and Ignis turn up on Aranea's banner alongside her. So if this turns out to be the case, it's actually a pretty strong banner anyway, particularly for new players, because Edge being an evade tank that is useful in numerous DEs, including ones as recent as DE 12 and 13, is actually just a great character to have, and Ignis being one of the very few characters that have um, access to debuff evasion while being a support character, and a non-magic based support character at that, gives him another niche of his own. So before we go into Aranea, I did kind of want to talk about the various things that the banner could be, but obviously things can all change. Sound off in the comments below if you think that that is the way that the banner is going to look, or if you think it's going to be slightly different. So let's talk about Aranea herself and what she does that made her so desirable the first time she came around. Now it's been quite a long time since she had come around, it's been nearly six months. Now the fact that she has lasted this long goes to show just how powerful she was when she was released. For those of you who haven't used Aranea or don't know much about her, though I find that difficult to believe given quite how many people have used her as friend units, even up until this point, she is a ranged attacker that is specializes in AoE damage dealing as well as re-breaking and delaying the opponent. So basically everything that a damage dealer could want. So when you look at top tier damage dealers, characters like Vayne, characters like Leo, characters like Lightning, Aranea incorporates a lot of that into her kit, but she also presents certain extra things that kind of separate her from that crowd. The first thing that I want to talk about is her the ability Vital Crusher, the debuff that she puts on the enemy. Now, most of the time, if a character that is damage dealing is somebody that I would consider to be top tier, so characters like Vayne, like Leo, like uh, you know Aranea, characters like that, they usually provide something to the party as well as being able to deal quite as much damage as they do. And Vital Crusher is actually a really powerful debuff that I think people take for granted when they look at Aranea because they look at Aranea and they just think, oh, she just does ridiculous amounts of AoE damage and does the delay. She does do that, that's very true. But Vital Crusher makes it so that weaker characters or particularly characters with multiple HP attacks in their attacks can do that much more damage. 
Now we're at a point where the attack stat of many characters is starting to creep up to catch up to Aranea and definitely be on the same level as her, and in some cases even surpass her, but there's no one quite the same as she is, and the things that she does are quite unique. Not only that, but she also has access to an absolutely ridiculous HP+. Plus. No one has, or very few characters have HP plus attacks even close to as good as Aranea's. High Boost Lance Plus is an AoE bravery attack and HP attack, and it also does splash damage, 50% splash damage to the enemies. So you're just gonna be getting a massive amount of brave overflow on top of it. You're also gonna be hitting really hard, so you're gonna break multiple enemies in a row, and you're also gonna deal a large amount of damage to the target that you specified, as well as anything else that happens to be there. So this is why I think that she specializes in AOE damage dealing. She's still very good at single target damage, but the, you wanna be able to take advantage of as many different things when it comes to Aranea as possible. The other thing that she also has, like I said, she takes elements from various different characters, is she has access to multiple consecutive turns when she has the buff from air superiority. So when she has that, it, or when she uses that, she gains uh, the high speed maneuver passive for three turns, or a buff for, th for three turns, that makes it that whenever she breaks something, she gets an additional turn after it. And of course, bear in mind that her uh, her attacks have rebreak in them. Her 35, uh, her skill two, high wind. I had to remember. I always refer to it as skill two, so I had to actually remember what the name was. Is also able to sort of rebreak the target and make it so that she gets another turn straight away. And it's just extremely powerful to be able to have canceling uh, canceling break in order to be able to make it so that you delay them one turn and then get another turn after it. And then of course with Dragoon Dive, it also delays the enemies by two further turns, which is extraordinary. Like there is no one quite like Aranea. The thing with Aranea that makes it so that perhaps she is not as uh, impressive as she was five or six months ago, is that she has two things that hold her back. The overclock buff itself. She can't do anything without the overclock buff. And in order to have that, you have to have broken a target or used her C65 in order to get the overclock buff back. So she doesn't she doesn't get plus versions of any of her skills. High wind you can use in order to gain the vital, uh, the vital crusher, to gain overclock, to make sure that, that starts you off. But that means you're having to use your skills quite regularly in order to keep these buffs maintained. Magitek Armament actually does do quite a lot from her, which is the buff she gains from using Dragoon Dive, so she needs to stay on top of the three turns that she gets from Magitek Armament, the three turns that she gets from Air Superiority, and as well as being able to maintain the Overclock buff for as long as physically possible. Her EX obviously helps this by extending Overclock's buff by two turns, but because you're having to use your skills whether you want to or not, in order to keep hold of Overclock to make sure that you're keeping on top of it, you you will run out of skills with her quicker than you would with certain other characters. Characters like Vayne, characters, even certain characters like Kais, things like that where they can recover their skill uses. You, Aranea can't do that. She will, she starts at 100% and eventually will run down to zero. So going forward, in any Chaos content, Aranea will still absolutely destroy pretty much anything that doesn't resist range. And even if they do resist range, we've had so many Imperial Enchanters now, you can still use her and it still work really well. There are, the, the question does come to pass though that when Lufenia difficulty starts to come about in two or three months time, maybe she won't be quite as good then. But then that raises the question, is a character lasting for the next two to three months still worth your gems and tickets? And I think that depends entirely on your current situation within the game. And of course, depending on what banner mates that Aranea has along with her. Because if you're a new player, there is no better character to obtain than Aranea. When I've been doing my offline play my playthroughs on Sundays on Switch, um, I can't pull for things. But if I were to get a free pull, there is no EX I would want more than Aranea's. Because she will clear everything that doesn't resist her outright up until this point in the game. She's just that powerful. And you know, to, to answer the question as to whether she's still worth obtaining, I honestly think she is. I think that there's a lot to be said for a character that has literally single-handedly carried a lot of players for many, many months. And I think that she will continue to do so, particularly for newer players, and she's still really good for the next two months. However, Back when she was released, she was the only character of this particular caliber. Whereas now, we've like got to a point where the power, where the power has crept up a lot. 
to a point where there are multiple characters that are as powerful as she is, even if they do it in a different way. So while she's extremely powerful, if you feel that you've cleared everything and you don't need Aranea for anything, not pulling for her is not quite as, oh my god, what are you doing, as it would have been five or six months ago. She's still really powerful, like, she still deals ridiculous amounts of HP damage really quickly. She's still a really powerful friend unit. She's great for summon farming if you don't have Leo. She's just good. There's, just, there's no two ways about it. She, she is just a very powerful character. I think by having been a global exclusive character, she needed to be exciting when she was released. And Lord knows they hit the nail on the head with that when she came about. And for players to have a second opportunity to grab her, I think is actually a really nice thing to do. So now we come to the part of the video where it's a case of should you pull for Aranea? Like, title of the video, we'll see how we go with it. Now obviously, like I said earlier in the video, we don't know exactly what her banner is going to be. So bear that in mind before you make a decision. However, I feel that with Aranea still being very strong, I think that I would pull for her if I were new to the game, if I wanted a character who would pick me up through the content that's already been out, like, you know, if I was going through all the lost chapters, going through all the chaoses for that, you'd be able to clean house with Aranea for the most part, and she, like, in a way that men not many other characters can do. If I've missed out on recent damage dealers and I wanted something that pushed my damage, then, you know, she's still really good for that. Like, there's a lot of other characters that can keep up with her now, but if you wanted somebody and you've missed out on a lot of these more recent characters, then she's still really good. If I wanted to experiment with Vital Crusher, because Vital Crusher is a very unique debuff, there's no other debuff quite like it, that makes it so that other party members deal increased damage without actually buffing yourself or anything, or taking up buff slots or anything like that. It's a very powerful debuff, and in my opinion, is one of the main selling points of Aranea. It combines really well with characters that use multiple HP attacks in their in their skills. So, for example, General Leo's Master Blade is perfect when in combination with Aranea. Like, as much as people say you don't need to have multiple delay characters in your party, Leo and Aranea, or Vayne and Aranea, or Leo and Vayne, it just works. Like, you can make it so that certain characters just don't get a turn, certain boss fights are just completely cheesed. If you want to make life easier for yourself, for content up until this point, she's still very powerful. The other character I did want to pair her up with is actually Kais, because the way that Kais's hero support works with Aranea is literally perfect. So if you put hero support on Aranea to make it so that she's guaranteed to launch on the next turn, and she still does all of the, of the AoE damage, she can even just use her HP plus to do this. Get the launch, Kais uses HP plus attack to make it so that everyone's regen bravery again. Because Aranea gets an extra turn from air superiority if she breaks something, that second turn she could just launch somebody else and then get the same buff and everything from Kais, and it's very, very strong. Similarly, if I didn't have, I mean, I'm gonna go with the example that it is Edge and Ignis. If I didn't have any of those EXs, I would at least consider throwing some resources at it because none of those are bad. Ignis is arguably the weakest because we've had characters like Aphmau more recently who provide a similar kind of thing but Aphmau is Aphmau and just takes three turns out the, out the wazoo. But honestly, Edge is still a really good character. He's one of my favorite characters I've used in many months, in fact, and so therefore I would at least consider throwing some resources at this if you have none of the EXs. But quite frankly, I think that if, if you have no EXs or nothing on any banner from this point forward, it's worth considering putting some resources into it unless you genuinely just don't care about anyone on that banner. With regards to whether I wouldn't pull for Aranea, um, I think that if you are up to date with everything and you didn't have Aranea in the first place, you don't need her. If you've cleared everything, there's no reason for you to pull for another damage dealer, even if they are as strong as Aranea is, purely because you've already done everything and you could save your resources using the characters you currently have, because you clearly didn't need Aranea in the first place, to save for things like LDs, bursts, things like that in the future. So I think that that would be more a, a more sensible use of your resources, even if Aranea is as good as she is. If you feel that, like, LD era is scary and you've not got an awful lot of resources and you want to be saving, and you want to start saving for that era, I think that not pulling for Aranea is not quite as egregious as it would have been five or six months ago, as I said. I think that she's really powerful, even now, and, but there are characters that have caught up with her, like, characters that will come out in the future will be 
as good as Aranea, if not better. And then obviously with LDs and things like that, it's gonna, you know, there's a lot more variety in your choices. And then the last thing I would say is if you're worried that Aranea's longevity may not hold up when Lufenia difficulty comes around, like I said earlier in the video, then maybe you could consider not pulling for Aranea. Like, I think that she's still a really powerful character for 90% of the character of players. I think that most veteran players already have Aranea, in all fairness. Like, I think that most people who have played for as long as I have pulled for her the first time she came out because she was just that further ahead than every other character in the game. Whereas now, that power creep is a lot more balanced and there are a lot more characters that you could use in place of Aranea. So, while I think she's extremely powerful, I don't think she is the be-all and end-all that she was five or six months ago. So that's going to be all for today's video. As I said, it's a little bit shorter than usual, but that's because I don't really have an event to cover. We don't know what the banner is, so I don't have other characters to recommend. But I thought it would be an interesting point of discussion to see whether Aranea was still worth pulling for so much later after her initial release. So sound off in the comments below, because I'd actually really like to hear from you guys. If you haven't pulled out Aranea, are you planning to pull for her now? If you aren't, then I'll give a good reason. I'd, I'd like to hear what your reason for doing so is, because I do think that she will carry you for a lot of content up until this point. Are you saving for Lufenia difficulty? Are you saving for LD and Burst Era? Because we're only three banners away from that at most. So we're starting to, it's, it's really starting to get close now. So there's going to be a lot of things to look forward to. And anyways, that's going to be it from me. Don't forget to like the video, share it out, subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications for any further videos that I have. And then come and find me on Twitch if you want to come and join me to play either Opera Omnia, Final Fantasy IX or various other things I've got coming up in the future. And that's going to be it from me. So thanks again and I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Take care.